Peace, peace. This is Dutch coming at you for Prison Riot Radio. And I got my good brother, man, on the phone right now. Dip is none. I need Perry, co-founder of Rectify. Shalom alaykum, ma'am. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, it's good to have you on, man. Like like I said, we've been talking about this for a while, man. And, and everything that you got on the plate, man, is just, like, it's, it's just a blessing for real. So I want to get right into it. First off, when, uh, how long did you do uh, behind the behind the G wall? Yeah, man. So I did um 20 all together. Uh, went in when I was 18. Uh, you know, got arrested when I was 18. Got when I was 19. And just got out at the age of 39. Right, right, home to the night. How long have you been home? So I've been home since May of 2022. Okay, okay, so right at about a year. Yeah, about a year all together. Got you, got you. So let me, let me ask you, during your time, when you came, when you, when you went to prison, were you already Muslim, or did you learn about the deed of day on the inside? Oh, man, alhamdulillah, man, good question. So my story and journey to Islam started with my family. So my uncle, he was Muslim, alhamdulillah, grew up in that household. All of his daughters wore hijab, you know, his sons made salat. And then as we got older, the streets took over, you know, naturally. And, um, you know, everybody got caught up into that. But um, I went to uh, the masjid a few times when I was a kid, you know, but I never accepted Islam. I never professed shahada. I didn't profess shahad until after my incarceration. And alhamdulillah, my brother had started giving me da'wah. And uh, that was it. You know, alhamdulillah, man. I was still to touch my heart, man. It guided me to Islam. I was, uh, I think, 20 at the time. I just turned 20. Okay. And so how how much of an impact did Islam have on you inside when it came to what what brought you through that those twenty years? Like, how did you make it through? What was the oh, strength, man, brother? It was it was only it was only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that brought me through that. Um, you know, I was in Maryland, man, in the Maryland House of Corrections Annex. Uh, right. man, I mean, its history is well known from the riots, you know, going on back in the century. I was in with with life. You know what I'm saying? It was a serious joint. So you came in, you know right. what I'm saying? First and foremost, you had to be stand up. You had to be a man. And um, so right. Islam helped me throughout that process to understand what manhood was. Because when I came in, right. you know, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I was young. You know, right. I thought I had a concept of what it meant to be a man, but I really didn't understand. Um, so alhamdulillah, that's the first right. thing Islam did for me following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and, and, and showing me how it's his far. way. Yeah, and the companions what manhood was. And then through my spirituality. So, you know, praying, fasting, you know, Ramadan, um, going through that, that process of cultivating myself every year, reading and studying uh, the book and, you know, learning. Um, I ended up becoming an educational amir. Uh, I did that, and then I ended up becoming like what was considered to be back then, before we knew better, a assistant imam. And um, I did that for quite uh, some time as well. Right. Got you, got you. So when you touched down and you and you got into, when you first touched, what were some of the first things that you did when you reestablished yourself on the street? Uh, man, the first thing I did was went to the masjid. That's the first thing I did. I mean, all the years I was in, you know, I would make dua to Allah, uh, one of the brothers, uh, that's well known, the brother Shadi Muhammad Hafidullah Ta'ala. I had read his book, He Came to Perfect More Character. And this was when it first came out. And I never forget, man, making right. that dua to Allah to get out, to go to the masjid, to make Hajj, to make Umrah, you know, to possibly, you know, go overseas and study and all of that. But the first thing I did, right. man, when I got, when I touched down was that morning for Fajr. I talked to my brother in law and I said, hey, man, uh, I need you to take me somewhere in the morning. He was like, okay, we want to go. I, I want to go to the mosque. So four o'clock that morning, yeah. first thing I did after coming home, right, sure. you know, I went to the masjid. Absolutely, got you, got you. And then when you when you, because I know you had you started rectify. And so tell me what were some of the decisions and what were some of the ideas that led to you you co founding rectify. You tell us how oh, rectify. Was okay, it. yeah. So rectify is a clinical reentry organization which specializes in trauma-informed peer support. And basically what that means is, is that we focus mainly on the inner, first and foremost, aspects of an individual right. returning from prison. So yeah, we're gonna get the housing, we're gonna do that. We're gonna hook you up with programming and workforce development and help you get a job and training or whatever else that you may need. 
but mainly we focus on life skills and we focus on the therapeutic aspect of addressing the post-incarceration trauma from, you know, adjusting and coming back out after spending so much time in prison, you know, because one of the things we know is, is that when you're in, you have the ability to contemplate, to sit, to reflect, to think about, you know, your, your, your behavior, your actions, your life, whatever. But you can never right, right, unpack right. all of that stuff. And you need those how to walk you through that process of unpacking all of that stuff that you have building for years. And so what Rectify does, one of the features that we have is that we work on unpacking those things. My partner, she's a social worker and licensed therapist. Right. And so we work with the clinicians, pairing them up, you know, with the individuals when they come out to get them, you know, the assistance that they need. Um, also, uh, we, you know, we uh, we have what is called peer support. So who better can be able to help an individual um, upon release than someone who actually went through it themselves? You know what I'm saying? So all of the work, you know, all of the all of the men and women that work for us are individuals who also went through it, know what it's like to return, know the adjustment curves that an individual is going to have and what the individual is going to need. So, you know, for example, for me, um, this is the reason why I started this organization. When I got out, I was sent to a, you know, I basically like a transitional home, halfway house, whatever you want to call it. There was men and women in the house, you know what I'm saying? One young lady, she had her daughter in there. CPS came and told her she had to take her daughter out. You know what I'm saying? She couldn't be in there. And, you know, it was still like, you know, drug atmosphere. Um, you still had individuals who were there that, um, you know, were actually engaged in, you know, selling drugs. So imagine me going right. home to that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. It was, it was tough. Right. Right. It was difficult. So... Right. I looked at it from the perspective of if I'm going to do it, we got to do it right. We got to bring a person home and put them in a safe environment first and foremost. We got to bring a person home right. and give them a chance to succeed as soon as they get out. You know what I'm saying? So right, I got you. with Rectify, you know, one of the things we did was saying, okay, let's make sure we pair up with peer support. I'm a peer support specialist myself. Um, that's the work that I do between Rectify. I work for the Office of the Public Defender in the state of Maryland, which is you know, think about it, <laughs> a guy who was convicted at the age of 19 for first degree murder and, you know, he gets out and now he's working for the state office of the public defender. You know what I'm saying? That's like a story right. in and of itself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Providing peer support Absolutely. to individuals who are incarcerated, helping them to get out and be able to get treatment or get the assistance that they need. Right. Absolutely. That is a blessing right there. And, and so you rectify is primarily in Maryland. Or so, Rectify, have any... so Rectify right now, it is primarily a state, a state of Maryland organization uh, that focuses on um, helping individuals transition in the state of Maryland all over the state. But we are doing some training um, where we're helping also with training individuals who are incarcerated in other states doing the peer support. So we're trying to show that intervention placed in Americans prisons right now. Um, we actually are working with uh, the NIDA and NIH, um, the National Institute of Drug um, Addiction, and the National Institute of Health uh, are supposed to be partnering right. with us really soon to start working on doing uh, research on paid intervention inside of incarcerated, incarceration settings. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's big. That's that's definitely big because, like you said, being able to take that template and spread it all over the country, I think that's something that's missing, you know, focusing on that trauma because a lot of times we, we do look at the jobs and the housing, which is extremely important, but we forget the inner, the, the inner workings of what's, what's going on within our minds and spirits. So I definitely applaud you for that. What, what, are, what are some of the addresses and, and, and emails that the people can get in contact with you? So if anybody want to, would like to get in contact with us, they can go out, go to our website first and foremost and just check us out. Um, it is rectifymd.org. Um, and they can go to either our info um, uh, uh, email, which is info at rectifymd.org. Or they can hit me up or hit my partner up on our emails. We'll respond back immediately. Um, my email is bperry at rectifymd.org. And my partner, Catherine Abrams, hers is C Abrams at rectifymd.org. And um, if anybody would like to get in contact with us, they can get in contact with us that way. Or they can call our number. You know, um, the number is 410 
six five six four uh forty one eleven. And um, you know, those are the ways to get in contact with us. Um, we're always available. Uh, and the phone is never turned off because we understand the situation. You know, we have people call us Absolutely. all the time about their loved ones, you know, and trying to get their loved ones, you know, into a situation to get ready to return or trying to see whatever help and support we can give them. We also advocates as well. So we'll come to court. I mean, we do all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, not charging your loved one a thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we majority get our funding through donations and grants. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we're working on building a cafe. Uh, called Rectify Cafe, serving coffee for a cause. We're partnering with a brother in Des Moines, Iowa, who has his own coffee processing plant uh, called Coffee for a Cause. He only hires returning citizens. Oh, wow. His workforce is full of people that, you know, have returned. Um, and uh, we're partnering with him to start doing, you know, pop-up coffee shops, uh, a cafe, and we're going to do a coffee truck out here in Maryland. Oh, wow, wow. That is, that is neat. I love yeah. that, bro. Like, like, what you're saying is not only, like I said, whether you have not only hit the ground running to assist yourself, but you need that assistance to parlay and helping up with her, and that's definitely a blessing. And I think that, you know, you're going to go far with this. Like, I can see the energy, I can see the passion, and I know that Allah is going to definitely bless you with the ability to shout and that and make sure all the brothers can benefit from what you what you got going on. So let me say, before we go out, what, what is the thing that you can tell somebody that is incarcerated or about to come home, what are some of the words of encouragement that you can leave them with? Well, first and foremost, I'll just say this, man, is that I always like to advise everybody to say, man, never give up. Never give up hope. Mm. You know, you're listening to an individual who truly, I am a walking example of what it means not to give up hope. Um, I was sentenced to life plus 15 years. Um, my my uh, appeal, uh, a direct appeal was denied. Uh, my post conviction was denied, and it you know I kept fighting you know through the appeal courts. You have sixty seconds won. remaining. You know reopen for post conviction. So I just say hope, never give up hope, never give up trust in Allah. You know never give up hope. And keep on pushing, keep on striving, Absolutely. and 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 do as much well, as you can while you're in it to better yourself. No doubt. Absolutely. I appreciate this, brother, man. And again, man, everybody out there, please reach out to the brother, reach out to Rectify, and see if, if, not, if you're not in Berlin, see how I can be brought to your, your, your neck of the woods. Again.